In this tutorial, I'm going to cover the second half of Chapter 2 from Photoshop Classroom in a Book, starting with the section titled Using the Spot Healing Brush Tool. But before we start there, I want to go back and talk about the very last step outlined in the previous section titled Adjusting the Color and Tone. Bullet point number 7 tells you to go up here to Layer and to the very bottom choose flatten image. Now take a look at my layers panel when I do this. As soon as I release this, the working adjustment layers that I made get flattened into the background and we have a single layer. And This will work and you can follow the tutorial. I don't like this workflow because once we start doing some retouching on this to take out the scratches and stuff and we do it on this single background layer, we can't ever go back to the original and I always like to have the very original where I started in my document so that if I need to go back and retrieve something I can or if I just want to be able to do a quick before and after to see where I started and where I'm at now I need to have that original so I'm gonna do a command Z to undo this and then show you a better way Okay, I have my adjustment layers back because I did a command Z or an undo. Before I merge these adjustment layers, I want to make a copy of the um, image layer down here. And the easiest way to do that is click and hold and drag down. So you see the hand icon there. I want to drag that hand right over this page icon and release and that created a duplicate. Let me double click on the properties so we can see the layers panel. Now I have layer zero and layer zero copy. Now what I want to do is merge the top three layers and keep layer zero intact. I'm going to do that by selecting either the top layer or the bottom layer. Right now I have layer zero copy um, selected. I'm going to hold my shift key down and then I'm going to click up here on levels one. So now all three of these layers are selected. Then I'm going to go to the menu here in the corner of the layer panel and go down to the bottom here where it says merge layers. And merge layers will merge the ones that are selected. So now I have levels one and level zero. Levels one, it just took the name of the adjustment layer. I like to rename it at this point. So I'll double click on this layer, which then highlights it. So um, I can call this my retouched layer. And I typically do this when I'm working. So this bottom one, I might even rename it and call this the original because that's the image, the scan, before we did any color corrections. If I turn the visibility off on the retouch layer, you'll see the original image in its kind of muted, dirty yellow color. So now we have a color corrected layer, and it's this color corrected layer that we're going to start with doing our retouching in the section using the Spot Healing Brush Tool. Before you start doing any retouching, make sure that you're selected on the layer that you want to actually retouch. Right now I have the original layer selected. I want to click up here on Retouched and make sure that this is the active one. So we're going to use the Spot Healing Brush, which is this one over here. There are several tools nested underneath here. So if you don't see the Spot Healing Brush on the top, count down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and pick that one. So the book gives you some specific sizes for your brush, which is controlled up here. The most important part of this is that your brush is a little bit bigger than the area that you want to remove. And then the book says to just paint a few areas and work your way down and it's going to disappear. Well, here's a tip that will save you a ton of time. I'm going to do a Command Z and an Option Command Z. That would be an Alt Command Z on a PC to step back two times. You can paint a straight line with any paint tool in Photoshop with a click and a shift and a click. So I'm going to click up here and I'm going to hold my shift key down and I'm going to click again. Let's see if we can get a complete straight line all the way at the bottom and I got rid of that in one stroke because it was basically a straight line that I was trying to remove. And then you can go around and click on the other little spots and areas. I like to call this 
sometimes I call this the zit removal tool or pimple removal tool because it does such a great job removing spots like this. Okay, the next section of the chapter is called Applying a Content-Aware Patch. I love the patch tool. I use it a lot. The patch tool is nested with this spot healing brush tool. So if you click and hold down, you'll see the patch tool up here. And in the book, it has you change the patch type from normal to content-aware, or it started with content aware because it tells you to put in a structure of four. And since they've already tested this, it's probably going to work great. But I can tell you that when I use um, the structure for content aware, I have to try a lot of different numbers before I usually end up finding something that, that works good. But let's zoom in on this. And as a reminder, I'm going to get to my zoom tool with a command and spacebar. And then I'm going to scrubby zoom to the right because what we want to do is remove this guy. So the way the patch tool works is you just draw a loose area around the object that you want to remove. So not too loose, but you want to make sure that you encapsulate the entire subject. And when you get back to where you started, you just let go. That makes an active selection, and we will be talking about selections in Chapter 3. Sometimes we call this marching ants. So this is the selected active area. And with the patch tool, you click in the middle of that, and you drag to an area that you want to replace it with. So for example, I wouldn't want to drag over here because then I would re be replacing him with the gal holding the child. I want to replace that area with more wall. So I want to try and carefully line up the wall as I do this. And you can see it's it's not going to be perfect because I have the option of the wall in the front, the foreground, or the wall and the building in the background. I'm going to choose to line up this foreground wall and then release. And as soon as I release, it goes around, it takes that area, and then it blends it all the way around. It does a pretty nice job. In order to turn this active selection off, I'm going to do a Command D. And when I turn it off, you can see that there's some areas that aren't perfect in here. And the book, the next section of the chapter, talks about the clone stamp tool and how to use it to clean up all those areas. The clone stamp tool looks a lot like a rubber stamp icon, and it acts a lot like a rubber stamp. The book gives you some specific numbers, again, for your brush. Um, I actually am going to use a little smaller brush. The important thing is, is to not have a brush that's so large that you can't control it. Um, and then the next thing is, is that you're going to need a lot of practice with the clone stamp tool. It's a tool that you'll use all the time and the more you use it the better that you'll get at. The first challenge is just to learn how to see. I'm going to zoom in on this area here by holding my command and spacebar down and point out that this um, little white area is repeated here and so is this one. That's the kind of thing that I would always clone out because that's a telltale sign that this has been patched or retouched. So the, the clone stamp, you use your option or your alt to pick up. So that's like stamping your rubber stamp on the ink pad. And the icon changes. So I'm holding my option key down and the icon changed to this target. I'm going to click right on this crease right here. I've now picked that up and loaded it. So if I move my brush off over here, you can see that I loaded the brush with the area that I option clicked on. And now I can come over to this section, line it up so it matches what's there and I can start painting this out. Now the reason why this is painting, um, I'm having to go over it several times, is if you look up here, the opacity of my brush is at 30%. If I take the opacity all the way up to 100% and then come down here, I can clone this one out. And the 100% actually didn't work so well on this because I'm seeing the edges of the brush. So maybe I'll take my opacity down a little bit and sample a lighter color area and then paint that over. And this is the process of clone stamping that's very, very hard to get from reading the book is that every time I pause here and you see the icon change, I'm 
resampling and I do it so fast I do it kind of without even thinking so I'm gonna resample here and then paint over here let's um, come down here and take this out and go resample here paint this out maybe take this brick line over resample from this line line it up and try and blend this in and then maybe if I oh, I left my opacity at 100 that's why it wasn't working so well let's take this down back down to 30 resample from here and then I can kind of feather that in with a lighter opacity this is how you use the clone stamp tool it takes a lot of practice it takes a lot of time and patience and the more you use it the more you love it you can finish this image on your own following the book's direction for sharpening. The important things to remember about the sharpening is that it should be the last step that you take after you've done all your retouching and color corrections. The other really important thing to remember is you can't really have a set of rules for sharpening because every image is going to require something different. This image has a lot of damage, it has a lot of pixels, so it's going to require different types of sharpening than say a photo shot off of a high-end digital camera.